Yeah, how's it going, seafarers? I don't know if that's a good nickname, but that's what we're using for this episode. Right away, get down to the comments. Tell me what I should be calling you guys for this series. Welcome to episode two of this Mariners franchise. Uh, the first one, well, we, we, we kind of went through the background of the team, what we have going on for us. Uh, and then we played our first spring training game where we absolutely uh, surprised ourselves, I think, with Jared Kelnick. Uh, first at bat, second swing of spring training, and we, we launched a solo shot home run out into deep right field. And now it's time to kind of move through most of spring training, if not all of it. And we're going to start maybe making a couple of trades and looking at free agency. Now, previously, uh, if we go to our depth chart, I had said we were fine on closing pitchers. But realistically, I think that uh, we only had technically one closer in MLB. I guess Wyatt Mills is there as well, but he's 56 overall. Uh, D potential. Not a guy that we want to see the field, uh, at least in my opinion. So we're not really going to worry about that. And we're going to go to a free agency. I said we weren't going to pick him up, but I lied. We're going to, well, at least we're going to try to pick up the 21-year-old in Jose de Jesus. I feel like it's okay. No MLB experience. He's got a strong throwing arm. That's nice. Good hits per nine innings. Everything else pretty mediocre. Decent velocity. Good arm. So, like, his fielding is pretty solid. Uh, the thing is, I mean, 73 overall. Much better than our other MLB service uh, closing pitcher. And he's only 21. I mean, even Felipe Casto doesn't seem too bad. Also, no MLB service. It's better potential, I think. No, they're both C. So... Let's go ahead and make him an offer he legitimately cannot refuse. $50,000 for the year is so easy. Oh, we have to release a player. Well, uh, that's all too easy. We'll just release, uh, I don't know, somebody who's bad? Well, I hate to do it to him, but Logan Reinhardt. Single-A pitcher, 24 years old, but 47 overall D potential. Just go ahead and kick him off and go onto the waivers, but we don't need him on the team. That will free up, hopefully, the space for Jose de Jesus. Again, offer him $50,000. He thinks he's worth more. That's fine. $10,000 is chump change to us, so we'll immediately sign him. I think that's a pretty big pickup for us in free agency, considering what's available at the moment. And we're going to then send Wyatt Mills down to AAA. And then I guess we need to remove him from the 40-man roster as well uh you know if he gets picked up on waivers that's not the end of the world we're going to add jose to the 40-man roster and we'll just throw him right into the fire right into the mlb uh <laughs> hope that he can do something for us and just like that that's our first free agent signing uh of this franchise i don't know i think i'd give that a pretty high grade Sixty thousand to give uh a little bit more depth to the bullpen that doesn't seem terrible to me. How about uh, our trade block? Let's go ahead and start throwing on players that we certainly don't want at all. Mostly just going to go through and look for low potential guys who don't seem like they could be all too well. And we're just going to add a ton of them onto the board. Uh, anything D potential, I think immediately we get rid of unless they're really high overall to begin with. Emerson Hancock, this guy I'm pretty excited for, but you know, it's going to be a while till you see some real service. And, I mean, honestly, so many of our relievers are, dare I say it, a little bit trash. I mean, I'm uh, apologies to these players, but they're just not going to make the cut with their potentials and their current overalls and their age. 25 years old, 55, and you're a D overall. It's just, I mean, we can look to just shift up this bullpen tremendously. I'm going to add almost everybody in our bullpen uh, that's a reliever uh in the minors onto this list and you know it, it's just there's so many spaces we can find free agents that could potentially be a lot better i think very easily wyatt mills uh we'll throw him on there as well just in case he gets picked up um you know just because i'm putting somebody on the trade board as well doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to trade them well i got to <laughs> third base and we've already filled up the trade board, so uh, maybe I'll be a little bit more kind to some of these guys. Keep uh, maybe the, the youngest of these players around so that I can add some of the older guys onto the board. But I'll hop back in when it's all done. 
Uh, but while we're thinking about it, where do we want to pick up positions? Uh, a good shortstop would be really nice. A good center fielder would be really nice. And I'm kind of thinking first base. Yeah, we'll go first base. Ty France is okay. Uh, and he's not too old. 27, but 77 overall. We would look for something a little bit better for sure. So I went ahead and did that. We added uh, kind of guys who were bad potential and a little bit older. And if they were bad potential and young, we kept them around just because they're young. Uh, and again, I, I think young talent that's bad is a lot better than old talent that's bad. I don't know. It seems kind of obvious to me. Uh, contract extension wise, we're not going to offer a ton all over the place. But I was thinking Logan Gilbert. He's 24 years old. B potential already 80 overall. That seems like a pretty solid. I mean, he's technically a two-way player. Does that show up for everybody? Oh, okay. I've never seen that uh, that top right. Um, so that kind of confused me. But yeah, Logan Gilbert, we will offer a contract extension. Last season, 4.6 ERA. That's not the worst. 2.3 war is actually pretty solid, I would say. So we will make an offer. And again, we want these to be long, but uh, man, these guys... The young players really don't like having uh, that kind of offer. How about 1.2 million? Okay, we're going to up it to 1.3 because 1.4 seems high. So there we go. Another contract signed. Didn't really feel like doing anything with front or back loading it. And that's our next contract extension. So we've done a little bit so far in this episode, which is good. Let's start simming through some spring training games. Let's go. Who do we want to play against? Uh... Let's see what we can do against the Angels here. We'll sim through this. Not terrible. Five and six. Let's see what we can do. Logan Gilbert just got the win. No, he's he's actually starting here. So we gave him a contract extension. Let's hop in and see what we can do. We are going to player lock as our starting pitcher there. And uh, we might not play the entire game, but we'll get it going. Otani is the designated hitter for these guys. I don't know if that means he's pitching, but I mean, it's the Angels. They got some cannons. And David Fletcher is going to be our first person that we're going to throw against. You guys haven't seen me pitch yet. It's not going to be great, I don't think. 94% accuracy. Hey, if we can just dot up the corners with fastballs, I'll take that. How about this slider? Also down in the corner. No, he pokes it through. And oh, second pitch. We've given up a base hit. Uh, that's not great, necessarily. Let's just try to minimize the losses. Little circle change. Oh, gosh, we hung that up. That could be gone. Pushing right field, and it's caught out, thankfully. Gonna push him back to first. Man, we're three pitches in, and we've already had a lot of contact there. And now it's Trout up to bat. So this is certainly going to be scary. Just outside the zone on the first pitch. Ball one. Just go back to this fastball. They're stealing. Let's we'll see what we can get. That looked like he tagged him out. All right, two outs. That seemed like a stupid time to steal, in my opinion, especially because we threw it. David Fletcher gets called out. Didn't hit that 20-mile-an-hour mark. Uh, that might have been what got him. All right, one and one after the pickoff. Let's just keep throwing these fastballs. They're working kind of well. Decent. Oh, man, my pinpoint off on that one. And again, pushing out to the right field wall. It's going to get down four. It looks like a double. Will he turn three? No. So we let Trout on into scoring position. <laughs> We're six pitches in. We've seen a lot of contact on these pitches so far. If we can just get out of this first inning, that would be fine. But now we got Shohei Otani up to bat. Another fastball is high for ball one. Let's just keep throwing these in. I know I'm throwing a lot of fastballs, but it's what I'm feeling confident on the placement with. Now that we got a strike, we can go with a little inside slider. See if we can get him to swing on that. Perfect. And there it is. One and two is the count. And with two outs, this is really good. Catcher wants me to throw another inside slider. We're going to go with the low curve ball. See if we can swing it in, in the dirt. And ooh, we hung it up there. Lucky he just fouls it off. Let's try to do that again, but like actually get it down low. Swinging, fouls it off again. Otani definitely battling on this one. What can we do with this pitch? Outside and high on the fastball. He takes a ball, too. And let's just go circle change. We're going to get him to strike out on one of these. Or he can just keep fouling off. My goodness. Doesn't help that I am not placing these pitches very well. That one perfect. But again, 
fouled off. Just like that, we're already 14 pitches into the inning. No guarantee we get out of this at-bat alive. There it is. Oh, no, it was fouled off. <laughs> the way the camera's work in uh, this mode, it can be a little bit confusing where things are going when you're pitching. And this has just popped up. Should be easily caught on the mound for out number three. Well, we get out of uh, putting Trout on base. A lot of contact on the pitches is a little bit concerning, but we survive through the top of the first. Let's see. Can we just get like a couple more innings pitched and we'll see Simming through? Obviously not going to play the whole game. Good four-seamer high inside for strike one. A little bit of a shift on for Jared Walsh in the five spot. Another fastball, low and away, swings early. Man, what kind of heat does he think we're packing here? Well, if he's going to swing at that, why don't we just put a little change up in the area? Let him absolutely, he could probably swing twice on a change up. <laughs> Did put it into the dirt, good eye from the batter. One and two, still trying to get that strike out. Not a great start to the pitch, and I just forgot to flick down. Oh, the pinpoint pitching a little bit rough right now. How about back to the changeup? We just keep changing speeds on him. Go off speed. And he fouls it off. We're just not placing these in good spots at the moment. Two and two. We haven't had a full count yet. Knock on wood because this is going to be a terrible curveball. And he's going to chop it off. And it's going to get down for a double, it looks like. As That's just a little bit disappointing. Two hits giving up both doubles. My placement really hurting us on this one. So still no outs in the top of the second. 22 pitches at this point. This is not going to be a very long outing as this one's popped up to the first baseman. He's got that no problem. Should always be able to trust Ty France in that spot. Matt Duffy in the seventh spot up to bat. This one a high fastball, but he swings on it for strike number one. Try to go to this changeup that really hasn't worked and he's going to ground it. Again to tie France. That's out number two, but it moves the runner to third. All right. Can we get out number three without letting a run in? Max Stassi up to bat the eight hole. First pitch is slider. Perfect, but put a little bit into the middle of the zone. That's a scary pitch for sure. Still, we get the strike. High outside fastball goes inside. And oh my gosh, we just got gifted a strike call from the umpire. That thing is nowhere near the zone. Well, if he's going to call that, why should we even pitch anywhere near the strike zone? There's the strikeout to end the top of the inning. And we are still alive. No runs given up, but a couple of hits. All right. About to turn over the order. Tyler Ward up at the top of the third. This will probably be our final inning pitch, as it looks like we did actually score a run. So good on the offense. Making use of what could be a shutout. I've lost control of it. <laughs> the game did not let me flick back down. So it's a super high fastball for ball number one. One and one is the count. Bad accuracy. But we get it in there. Just blew it past him. 98 miles an hour. How about, well, they want circle change. How about a curveball low and away? Good strikeout pitch. We got him. Absolutely beautiful. So back to the top of the order. Another strikeout to our name is exactly what we're looking for. Let's start it with a decent fastball. Not the best control, pushed it a little bit right, so it's high out of the zone. Just need to get one in there. It's definitely got to be a little bit worried about David Fletcher, but as long as I can get out of this inning without having to face Mike Trout or Shohei Otani again, I will probably be happy with that. One and two, the count is we're going to deal a fastball outside. Just try to get him to swing at something in this pitcher's count. Perfect. He does pop it up. It should be grabbed. Outfielder gets to it. No problem. And that's two away. Brandon Marsh up now. He flied out in the first. If we could get that again, that'd be fine. But again, always looking for the strikeouts, trying to make, uh, you know, our pitcher that we just gave a big contract extension to look really, really good. We don't want that to be a bust of an extension. Two strikes on two fastballs, and now we have a lot of room to work with. Let's just throw a curveball into the dirt, see if he decides to swing at it. And he does pop it in front of the plate. Oh, he's going to get on base. Not in time. Kind of thought the catcher was going to go for it, but uh, he elected to have me have it, and I was slow to react. So we give up the hit there. <laughs> that means that we do have to face Mike Trout with a runner on first. 
Slider? Okay, what is this umpire on today? If that's not called a strike, but the fastball up top was. How about this one? Okay. Left that fastball almost middle-middle. Trout just fouls it off, thankfully. Somehow got out in front of it. And we're almost going to do it again. Thankfully, that one was inside, so he does pull that one foul. And just like that, it's one and two. He's having a hard time making great contact with the fastballs. And that one almost put it in the perfect spot in the corner. Center fielder's back, and that's going to end the inning. So we've made it through three. We gave up three hits, I want to say. But no runs given up as the top of our order is coming up. And who knows? Maybe they can do something. All right. Well, we have reached the top of the fourth. Offense put up a couple more runs. 3 nothing. But we're going to sim to the end of this one. 43 pitches. Simulate an exit and hope for the best as we can just skip to the end of the game. Looking okay. 5-1. So the two games that we've played, we come away with wins. That puts us to 500 so far in spring training, which is our season's goal. Obviously, spring training a little bit different than the actual season, but if we can get it done during the spring, we can get it done during the summer and maybe the fall. So certainly nothing to complain about. Mitch Hanniger gets player of the game honors two for three with a home run. Two RBIs, and we do get the win. Four innings pitched, four hits, four strikeouts. So, while wow, simmed, we gave up another hit, but picked up a uh, couple more strikeouts. All good with me. Logan Gilbert now 2-0 and oh in this spring training. 14 innings, 15 strikeouts, a 4.5 ERA. Would like to see that a little bit lower, but at least we didn't give up any runs today. 6-6 six and six for our Mariners. And let's see if maybe we can make a trade. See if anybody wants this. Kind of looking to move a couple of infield pieces. Sam Haggerty, our second baseman, 27 years old. Uh, C potential, 70 overall. He's sitting behind both Adam Frazier and Dylan Moore. So we'll offer him up. Tyler Keenan is our third string third baseman. He is only 23, but a D potential with a 63 overall. He's more of a prospect pickup, only $50,000 on salary. So won't be looking to change much right there. And then the 26-year-old shortstop, Riley Unrow. F potential, uh, 66 overall. See if anybody is looking to pick that up. And this is where, I don't know, maybe our self-policing would come into uh, effect. Maybe it's not too cheesy because he's 30, but Trey Mancini for these guys seems like a little bit much for me. So we're going to keep shopping and we'll pop by. I'm going to find something that works for these three. Now, we have been offered a trade by the Angels. Joe Adele, 22-year-old A potential outfielder, and Brandon Marsh, 24-year-old B potential outfielder. This seems a little bit too good for us. We are taking a bit of a salary hit, but both Joe Adele and Brandon Marsh seem strong. So we're going to offer them the same trade, but just for Joe Adele. He has some MLB service. He's not the best batter, but he's really quick. He's a decent fielder. Uh, and again, a potential and super young. So he's got that going for him. Uh, we would have those arbitration rights for a while. He's got that elite running speed. Uh, that way it doesn't feel like we are necessarily stealing anything from them. Because throwing in, um, who was it? Brandon Marsh. Like that just, I don't know. It seems like that's a little bit too much. I guess at that point you would maybe call it a salary dump. But this seems like a, it's a little bit more fair. We do have to obviously have successful trades, so I can't just uh, allow us to get fleeced in every one of them. But I'm a big fan of Joe Adele. I think he could do some work for us. And we will go ahead and offer this trade. How do I... Yeah, offer this trade to the Angels. They'll accept it. So we move a couple of pieces and we pick up a new right fielder for ourselves. We do have a lot there. Mitch Hanniger, Dom T. Williams uh steven souza jr but joe adele can be added to that list young guy only 63 overall but very very high upside now he is currently uh on the mlb roster but i think what we're going to do is drop him down to triple a for a little bit so that he can be a little bit more successful and actually see some playing time because i don't think he's going to see any behind uh alberto rodriguez and mitch hanniger so that'll give him a, a chance to shine for the Tacoma Rainiers. 
very excited to have well let's see we have a contract extension we have a free agent signing and we have a trade all completed uh in this episode and actually i'm gonna backtrack on that for a second because we're gonna move him to the mlb roster so that we can player lock as him uh in a spring training game kind of a shame that we just played los angeles because i would have loved to you know have him show off against his next team or his previous team but uh we'll go ahead and play the white Sox. we stay at 500 so eight and eight this is a chance to pull above 500 in this matchup and we'll go ahead and player lock as our 63 overall new prospect very curious to see how this one goes we are batting eighth so probably won't have a crazy amount of at bats but uh anything for a chance white Sox or nine and six in spring training um we'll see what we can do lance lynn starting pitcher and here we are top of the third we're already down to nothing joe adele uh we did put him on the roster and then sim through a few games so he's had some chances and he is uh 0.071 so he's been, or he's gotten one hit, at least. I don't know if that includes any time that he's put in uh, with LA, though. Just going to try to be patient. Look for a good pitch. Try to get on base. This is, uh, is going to be tough. I've been playing a lot of Diamond Dynasty on Rookie. Just uh, grind out games. <laughs> so PCI is much smaller than we were used to. Two and one. Just watching pitches come in, waiting for hours. That's a tough fastball, low and away. Gives us two and two. Gotta be looking to swing again. And, oh, we made some contact, but just chop it right back to the pitcher. That's a shame. Thought maybe, you know, if that gets through, we could get on base, but just a little bit too much of a chopper. And it just continues to be bad news for us. Top of the fifth. We're up for our second at bat. Down four nothing. One out. Runner on first. Uh, Lucas Giolito pitching. This is kind of scary. They've been pitching away from us. Man, that came quick. Last game, Joe went 0 for 4 with two strikeouts. That's not all that great. We're 0 for 1 today. Not going to get that four opportunities is what it feels like at this point. Good ball taken away. Count is 1 and 1. Just got to wait for a good pitch. Trying to be patient is like the name of the game. <laughs> oh my gosh. We're not going to get a fastball right down the gun ever again, I don't think. Kind of a shame we don't swing on it. But we're just trying to stay alive. And again, get above it. Chop it down to the pitcher. Even with the 93 speed, we can't beat it out. And they get us with the double play. Well, let's get a chance to see the speed in the outfield. See if, uh, you know, that was a good pickup as a defensive player. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. They're just going to pop that straight to us. We'll get the second out in the bottom of the fifth. Still down 4 nothing. All right, this could be our last at-bat. Top of the seventh. Again, runner on first with one out. Very much scared of chopping one to the pitcher for another double play. And we make contact with the fastball, but foul it off behind us. 0-1, Kyle Crick pitching to us. I like the position of both of those pitches. We're just uh, way behind them. And again, I'm just I'm dropping the PCI a little bit low. 0-2 the count now. A little bit scary. Deals us a fastball in the zone. We stay alive with a foul. Still 0-2. I think we're going to be contact swinging just to try and stay alive. We don't expect Joe to really... Oh my gosh, that was the most obvious ball of my life. I was going to say we don't expect him to do a whole lot with these at-bats since he's going to be putting in a lot of AAA service. But, you know, we can't be swinging at bad pitches. Yerman Mercedes. I thought about maybe trading for him. He was offered to us in a couple of packages. But instead, we'll just let him pop out to the guy that we do trade for, and that'll end the seventh. Well, we did finally score a run. I guess uh, the top of that eighth, it was the top of our order up to bat. They did something. Defensively, we're still doing good. I'm not sure we'll show a lot of defense uh, when we're player locking like this, but because he's a new trade and he's our first trade, we will be doing it. And Well, we don't get another at bat. Looks like it's a loss to the White Sox, so we dip. Just below 500 again. Did we score another run? No. They didn't have to bat in that ninth inning. Rough day. 0 for 3 with a strikeout and a couple of grounders straight back to the pitcher. Man, Logan Gilbert pitched, uh, I guess, starting for us. Got his first loss. Uh, picked up a couple strikeouts. ERA up to a 6.16. 
Well, let's just uh, start simming towards the end of free training. And I guess we'll play that final game and be ready to start the season next time up. Coming into this final game against the Padres, we are one game back of 500. Robbie Ray will be pitching. And I think especially because it's spring training, we're just going to keep, you know, kind of popping through newer players onto the team. So Eugenio Suarez was traded for in the offseason. And we're going to player lock as the third baseman in this game. Padres 15 and 9. See what we can do as we are getting really close to the start of uh, the, uh, the season. Getting close towards opening day. Very excited as, uh, ooh, kind of bad weather for this final day. And here we go. Bottom of the, or top of the second. 2 1. One out. Great pitch to swing at, but it's hard for me to swing out of the first one. Suarez batting. I think that said, yeah, 236 in spring training. That's eh, a little bit lower than we will want, but not too unacceptable. Ooh, lucky on the uh, fastball up and outside. That's called a ball. Gives us a one and one to work with. Mackenzie Gore, 28 pitches here in the top of the second. I went chasing after that slider. Definitely expected that pitch to be a fastball again. And oh, the curveball just missed. I thought we were going to go down looking, but we are still alive somehow in this at bat. Two and two is the count. And we make contact, but what is that? Manny Machado making the dive. And, you know, we're not a very quick runner, so easy throw out for him for the second. And yeah. Almost got it to sneak through, but he's a good third baseman. How about this? Still 2-1. Top of the fourth. Runner on first. One out. We got to get a base hit at some point during this episode, right? Oh, we were right there, but late on the pitch. Didn't want to commit early. Manny Machado still there. It was him. Not playing Tatis at uh, shortstop today. Unless something happened, they traded him already in this franchise, but I wouldn't expect that to happen. Ball outside for ball one. The count is now one and one. Just got to wait. Gore getting up there in pitch count. Can't swing. If we're going to try to steal, I can't swing. That was a... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> he was out by a mile there. It's a shame because PCI was going to be in the area. We should have just swung on it and accepted the consequences. Oh, the changeup just embarrassed us. Swung about a mile out in front of that one. Well, this is actually a pretty important defensive moment. Base is loaded. Two outs, and I cannot see where the ball is going. Oh, I just threw it to home plate. Well, we got the force at home down the fourth. <laughs> I hit the wrong button, kind of panicking there. But it works in our favor, and we still have the lead. Ooh, things went poorly for us, it looks like, because it was about to be the top of the fifth. Now it's to the top of the seventh, and... Well, we still really haven't done anything. One out here. Tie ball game. That PCI is looking real small, but we get the perfect grounder. I think they would call that a ground ball. Out past uh, third baseman in the shortstop. Find the gap, and well, there's our base hit for the day. Well, two and two. Still one out. Jared Kelnick in. And he's going to... Poke it into the same gap. Get himself a base hit and moves us into scoring position. Still with just one out. Unfortunately for us, it is Dylan Moore up to bat. 0-1 is the count. We know this is going to be contact. And he's going to bat himself into a double play. So we finally got on base. Almost got to third. But they turn two and the inning is over. Well, everything on the line for us in this final at bat. Top of the ninth, down one, two outs, a runner on first. And man, he tried to steal. No way am I allowing you to steal. Not after the way it went last time. Sure, I mean, I don't know who that is. It could be Joe Adele, 93 speed. But uh, I can't trust that. Our guys have always been thrown out in this spot. It is, in fact, Joe Adele. Took a look. One and one. They're definitely worried about him stealing. I just, I don't know. He's... Probably the best guy on the roster to go for it. But do we trust it? I'm not sure. 2-3. Terrible swing. Terrible swing. 
That's a decently quick fastball. That knuckle curve really scares me. One and two. Definitely favoring the pitcher here. Got to swing. Got to foul it off. Trying to battle on this at bat. Anything that we can do to stay alive in this game. We're battling for 500. Contact swing. Good timing. But man, we just popped that straight up. Center fielder. No problem fielding that one. And that's going to be our final as we will lose this game. So can't win them all. That PCI looking really, really small today, though. I'll tell you that much. Well, at least we got our one base hit of the day. End of spring training. We go 12 and 14. You know, there's some things that you wish would have happened better. But it's really not the end of the day. I am curious. Uh, what did Robbie Ray end up going? Is that the last game that he pitched so he goes one and two 30 innings pitch 39 strikeouts 3.26 era it's not terrible that's for sure curious uh who did the best george kirby uh 1.32 era leads the team there he didn't pitch a lot of innings but i i, well, I mean 13 is about half of what robbie ray pitched with a much better era won then I don't know if that's how you say that last name. He does okay. So does Marco Gonzalez. Um, Logan Gilbert. Mm. Are we regretting the contract extension through 25 innings pitched? 24 strikeouts, 5.04 ERA. Uh, 1.6 whip isn't terrible, but he gives up 14 earned runs. So I don't know. With three home runs. Yeah, I don't know. You would always like to see that higher. All very, very interesting. We'll go ahead and start simming through these days. And there it is, the end of spring training. And, oh man, it's going to be a really interesting season. That's for sure. Unfortunately, that's going to have to do it for this episode. I think now that we've kind of reached the regular season, we're going to be playing a lot more games. Uh, we will be doing the critical situations. So if we sim past a game... But a critical situation pops up, which are typically later in the game, the last couple of innings, or maybe even the last out. We're going to play every single one of those. So our episodes will become a little bit more gameplay focused with the uh, under the hood stuff happening more so behind the scenes. If you guys are enjoying this series, uh, please let me know in the comments and also let me know by liking the video branching out into a different sports game that's a completely different sport than the one that you're doing is always a little bit risky for a channel so every uh interaction that you guys give these videos especially the likes really does help out and if you want to be notified when new videos get posted please feel free to hit the subscribe button uh, and then head down to the description where you can find links to my twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster it's also links to my Twitter and our community Discord. All that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. For now, you guys are the seafarers. Wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios. Special thanks to our Tier 3 members, Durham Finch, Avery Binkley, and Warmaster777.